welcome to MS4 and today on the beauty of business we're going to be talking about aging disability and otherness uh, I've put on my makeup I have my cup of coffee I'm not ready to talk about it um, so this is a very personal uh, issue to me and so I feel like you know you're gonna get my perspective on this I'm not a doctor I'm not a theologian I'm not anything else I'm just a makeup lover where and I have had MS since 1998, um, relapsing remitting. And just to give you a, just a brief overview of what MS is, um, multiple sclerosis uh, basically is when you're, it's an autoimmune condition, it's when the body decides it's going to attack certain things at different points. Um, with MS, it attacks, it either uh, does lesions on the brain or on the spinal cord. And basically, think about the, the spinal cord as uh, this conduit where all your nerves are, and it has this myelin sheath around it. So it's like, uh, with MS, it's like rats have started chewing away at your power cords. Uh, all that plastic coating on the outside of the power cords is getting nibbled off. Um, if you have relapsing remitting, which I do, um, the body, when it's done being attacked and attacking itself, um, it decides to calm down and then your body can reheal itself if it's able and um, if it has all the component parts to do so. Um, but the thing with MS is depending on where it's attacking in the brain and the spinal cord, uh, the symptoms will be different. So it's very difficult sometimes to diagnose for people um, because it will look like all sorts of other things. Um, but there are tests to do that. But what it does also is that my symptoms vary drastically sometimes minute to minute, day by day, uh, depending on what my body is doing and how excited it is and how many rats are chewing its power cables. So um, what this does is in some ways for people with MS, it makes it a hidden disability. Um, when I first got my diagnosis, I was pretty scared because the only people with MS I had ever seen were people who were in wheelchairs. Um, you know, the whole, you get it, downside until you're a wheelchair you can't walk and then you die that was in my mind what I had seen um, and what I knew about it now if it gives you any indication um, people who have had MS uh, if you remember from Laverne and Shirley Lenny and Squiggy uh, Squiggy had MS and to explain away why he was having balance issues and problems falling around he just let everybody think he was a falling down drunk all the time uh, rather than, than let people know it was a disability. Um, so it's there's a lot of choices in how we deal and how our industries or the people around us deal with disability. Um, and sometimes that whole idea of it being hidden and we don't think about it um, is really important because we don't think about it until either it's us or it's happening to somebody that we know or somebody that we love. Now, the idea of, of stars having it and talking about it and being open about it is kind of important. Um, think about Michael J. Fox with Parkinson's. Um, he has become a visible figure for people with Parkinson's and everybody knew and loved him, loved him, love him still, um, from his work in, in television and film. And so as people got to understand that he had Parkinson's and getting to see how his disease has progressed, that's really made people aware of it in a way that they weren't before. Um, and then you have people with other different kinds of disease. Recently, um, there's been a number of high profile people who have, have developed multiple sclerosis, so that's become more in people's minds as, as how they're doing. And depending on what type they have, you know, if they have the, the relapsing remitting and that kind of ebbs and flows, it's one thing if they have a different type of diagnosis and it just depends on how everybody's body responds to different things if they're on different types of treatment but it makes me aware a lot of different things and different companies especially beauty companies that come out with things that are helpful for people with different types of disabilities um, most recently this last towards the end of last year uh, the L'Oreal group came out with their advertising that this year 2023 um, that they would be partnering with a couple of different products that were made for people with different disabilities um, the first is the hapta and basically this is a a makeup assistance tool is what they're using it for 
Um, people with things like Parkinson's where your hands shake a lot, they've been working with a lot of motion stabilizing devices for things where like you can sign documents, you can eat cereal, um, things that you might not have been able to do just because of the, the shaking of the hands. And in this case, the Hapta is, is going to be helping people apply makeup. Um, the one that they're, they're most publicly showing is the lipstick application. And it has where it has a, a kind of a strap over it where it can hold on to the hand. And then it has that motion stabilizing uh, device technology that will allow people to apply makeup. Now, like I said, it's been here for that type of technology has been he being worked on for a while for things like feeding oneself. Um, but in a lot of ways, people don't think about things like applying makeup and what makeup is able to do for people uh, with disability. Um, oftentimes you just want to feel pretty and sometimes you want to feel normal and sometimes you want to feel like you're participating in something. You're getting to be able to be part of a larger picture that everybody else can participate in. You want to be part of that. Um, and so I feel like this sort of a move towards technological assistance is really super important for making people feel like part of something, to be normal, to be participating, to feel beautiful. Um, so that it's one less thing you have to worry about, you know, how can you apply lipstick or maybe a, a deeper color of lipstick. Maybe you could apply, you know, something very light, um, but you never could participate in those fun color trends because it would just get to be a hot, hot mess when you were trying to apply it. Um, but people don't think about the, the whole notion of I am going to benefit even though this technology, this idea, this whatever is not for me. Um, they don't think about the other things, the other ways that people could be benefited by this, themselves included, when they're looking at something new that specifically looks and targets at a certain specific audience. Um, sometimes they don't realize how it's going to be helpful because they don't yet have a problem. Um, I did not realize how wonderful and inclusive going to Disneyland could be until I had to go in a wheelchair, um, you know, and the fact that they're set up in a lot of ways to try and facilitate everybody being able to participate in what Disneyland is, no matter what their physical condition. And I wasn't aware of the little things they could change. Um, in order to facilitate people with disability until I was there and that was me. And for me, I'm not there anymore, but it gives me a special appreciation for companies who try and think about who are we not serving? Like like the television so, you know, are you being served? This is the question, you know, are you being served with your cosmetics, with everything, with your expectations in your life? And um, people, when the waterproof cell phones came out, um, were like, man, can't people even be off their phones in the shower for a second? What's wrong with them? But then you had people that were piping up going, I can now take a shower without somebody being there because if I, I fall or pass out, I won't be trapped in the tub for four hours um, waiting for my husband to get home. I can call somebody, <laughs> you know? And it's like that you don't realize and when the Apple Watch, I was watching, we watch Apple porn at my house, the whole like, when they launch the different Apple products, when they have the big meetings and they show everything, um, when they were, were demoing uh, at the, I can't remember which version it was of the, I, the Apple Watch. And they showed how that they were launching this new version of the Apple Watch that had phone capabilities uh, where you could call somebody from your watch if something happened. And also they have like where you could take the AFib. If you fall down and lose consciousness and your watch can tell that, it can call somebody for you. And I cried, I cried. I was like, ah, because they had all these stories, of course, of people who had been saved by their, their Apple watch. And so not only was that incredibly effective marketing, but it also gave me a feeling of freedom that if 
I had my watch on if something happened to me if I was out taking a walk on my own and if I fell or did something that I wouldn't be helpless and so therefore I was had a much great level of freedom for you know taking walks on my own exercising in weird places you know just that sort of thing that element of freedom that people who are just thinking well it's just a watch you know, for me, it's it's a little more than that. It's the idea that I can be free to do things that maybe normal people don't have to worry about. So that's a huge thing. Um, now for beauty, it's not only these mechanically assisted uh, products that are going to be coming out this year. And L'Oreal Group, right on. Thank you for everybody. Because I don't know what the application of that is going to be good for me, it's gonna be useful for me. I can't see the future necessarily, but I can think about like, is this getting a thing like Disneyland? At some point in time, I'm going to be having problems with my motor skills and my hands with shaking or whatever, and I might want this device because I still wanna wear makeup, I still wanna participate, I still wanna feel beautiful. Um, in the meantime, I still have hand issues and certain things that I don't think about. And I just want to highlight some of the companies that I think are doing things really right and for different reasons. Um, one size. All their packaging is designed to be easy to open because it's got these two closures. Okay, it's magnetic, easy to open because of these two. And the creator, Patrick Starr, really was looking at this for people with long nails. Um, that would have problems opening different packaging. But for me, when I'm having hand issues, this kind of packaging is just fabulous. It's a godsend, I love it. Um, so that was a big thank you that direction. Um, also, today I'm wearing, uh, these are Laura Mercier, but they're little sticks, little cream sticks, that are super easy to just swipe on and you can maybe tap with your finger, but they're really easy to work with and beautiful soft color but they just swipe on super easy and they don't take a lot of you know if I'm bouncing around it's fine all I got to do is just tap a little bit it looks great um, same with my my Laura Geller these are the the Kajal they have a really big tip they are, after just a, a little bit, they're budge proof, waterproof. So if I'm sweating, crying, whatever I'm doing, these will stay on through everything. Um, but this wide tip allows it just to be a really easy, you know, and then you can tap or you can, you can fix or whatever, but they go on really easy and you don't have to be uber precise with them. They can just smooth on really easily. Love these. Um, <clears throat> and then, some of the the packaging, this is Sigma. This is Sigma Lipstick Temptation. But as you can see the packaging, this is not completely round, it has an edge. And while it, you know, looks cool, the other item about this, and Rare Beauty has been doing with this with most of their lip products and any of the rounded products, um, setting them up so that if you place them on a countertop or a desk, they don't roll. Um, now, why is this interesting for people with disabilities? Um, because if if I have to chase my, my, if my lip product rolls off of my desk, there are some days I don't have enough energy to go chase it. So that's where it's gonna live for a while. Um, it's going to just be there. Um, but the fact that you have something that's not gonna roll off is useful for people if they have something on their nightstand and they're waking up in the middle of the night and they're searching for their, their lip, you know, like their emollient lip product, like some of the, the Rare Beauty just like more of a chapstick sort of a feature. Um, but if it's something that I'm, I'm laying on a vanity and it doesn't roll off, um, that's good for everybody in a lot of ways. Maybe it doesn't fit exactly with, you know, if you have containers to put things in, but the things you never think about it, if you're a person that gets up and does your, your makeup about four in the morning because you gotta go to a, some kind of a weird shift, having things that don't roll off is really super important. Um, so I'm going to to use Sigma as a gateway to the next conversation is about aging and otherness. <clears throat> because as I was, I was looking at the new, uh, one of the new shades, the peach shades, and it sold out, of course, um, of the Sigma lipstick, um, of the infinity point lipsticks. Um, 
I was browsing through the, the pictures of the colors and I was really surprised by. Um, I swiped into a picture of it and then there was a, a close up of lips that were old. They had lines, this, this woman had, you know, deep lines both around the lip area and on the lips itself. And I was surprised because you don't get to see that all the time. And so I was like, wow, Sigma, way to go. Um, places like QVC have always had older models for makeup, which is also very appreciated um, because that's something that, you know, it's not just young women who are wearing makeup who are wanting to participate, uh, people of all ages. And so I, I have enjoyed that as far as QVC going. Um, that they're, they're models, they have models of different ages and also of different skin tones, um, showing how is something going to look on somebody who has dark skin, medium skin, light skin, super light skin, and old, older skin, skin with aging, skin with not just fine lines and wrinkles, but real actual wrinkles. Um, and it got me thinking when I was looking at the Sigma ad, that that whole element of surprise of, of that sudden moment where you're like oh tells me something about what i'm used to seeing what i understand as normal and what i'm being fed or given as far as the advertising for cosmetics and the fact that i should have a moment where it's like oh those are lips i'm not used to seeing um, tells me something about how non-inclusive or inclusive things are and how we don't even think about them, how that's something that just goes down into the subconscious. We're not used to seeing certain things, so it strikes us as odd, um, which can move from just this is odd to this isn't right, this shouldn't be. Um, those different feelings in the background because of what we're used to, what we're used to seeing. Um, and the thing that I like about, and think about however you want to, with one size, um, the, the models range from different ethnicities to different skin tones to male and female. Um, so when you're going across the lip swatches in their advertising, um, you've got somebody who's got deep skin, you've got somebody who's, who's heavier, you know, who weighs more, and you've got a man wearing lip color. And as you swipe through that, if you wanna take a test, just start start doing that with your advertising with that and see how do you react? Is it something that's like, as you're swiping along, you think, oh, that's odd, or oh, that's completely normal. Because right now, what's completely normal for us to see is somebody who's about, you know, 20 years old, you know, of a certain skin tone wearing a certain color. That's what we're used to. Um, but I appreciate when I'm looking to see if a brand has color that reads on different skin tones. Um, there's some specific YouTubers that I'll go look and see and say, hey, is this cheek color really for everybody or is it only for the pale to light skin tones? Um, and I think that's super important to think about how, how we are being served and what it's doing as far as uh, our brains and normalizing things for us. Um, also with this, the idea of age, we're coming into a time when there's a lot of, of women who are hitting menopause and are experiencing things and have money, uh, actresses, entrepreneurs, and the idea that a number of brands are starting, like the number seven starting a menopause brand. Um, of skincare, um, that people are going, okay, there is a population that's not being served, that's still wanting to participate in quality skincare, quality makeup. What are we doing to both bring them things that are, are helping them, are solving a problem? Um, again, things either sell a fantasy or solve a problem. And the selling a fantasy is that your, your skin is going to remain plump and youthful and smooth you know, and the solving a problem is like, my skin is so dry, it's gonna like, you know, fall off, <laughs> you know, like it's gonna suddenly 
pulverize into powder and fall off of my face, um, which is what a number of women are do experience in the, the, or they have a reoccurrence of acne because their hormones are changing. You know, it's just, it's a question of, we have a lot of people who at this point in time may have more discretionary income. Uh, again, the, you know, it's the, you got the kids out of the nest or whatever, or, you know, if you're one of the people that's like uh, two adults, no children income, um, that people are, are seeing like, okay, hormonal changes do make a difference. And so we need to be serving this population by making skincare that addresses some of the specific issues. And people have started recognizing this can be a you know billion dollar industry, a billion dollar group. Um, and so I feel like that's, that's important, um, but it's a monetary reason. You know, we want to, to see this group, we have people who have money, we want to, to be able to grow a business. Um, and this is a new, opening up a new market that we haven't had before. So if, if we have market saturation, um, you know, with the, the younger crowd, then this is opening up a completely different market. Um, and so it's, it's one of those things that, you know, seeing people as a market has that added bonus on the nice side is that people who have not been being served are now going to be being served. Um, and I wanted to kind of conclude looking at like the, the thing with disability, you know, um, I appreciated, and I don't know if it was, if, if the Ulta did a campaign where they had a couple of women in wheelchairs in their, their uh, pictorial ad campaigns. And the, someone off the internet, and again, this might be fake, but I think the, the idea behind it is real enough that, that we should at least look at that. It was a, a little girl standing in front of that, um, that picture, you know, and her being in a wheelchair and seeing the picture. And I think that kind of thing with beauty, again, normalizing what does beautiful look like, who are we serving, um, what's normal, who gets to participate. Um, I think that's super important just, you know, from young people, not just children, but you know, as you're growing up, seeing different types of people, seeing different skin color, seeing different ages. Um, so it feels more normalized in the subconscious. Um, I know it was Halloween one year and I saw the cutest Halloween costume um, and I had posted it on my Facebook. Um, it was a, a princess costume, but it was made for a, a person in a wheelchair. Um, and it had different castle aspects that you could put on your wheelchair and then you could be the princess in the castle. And I posted that to my Facebook and I have a friend whose daughter is in a wheelchair and she replied to that, that she really appreciated that and that her daughter would be so excited to have that as a Halloween costume. Like the, her daughter was gonna love that. And I'm getting a little teary here. Um, that really felt important to me that, you know, somebody, you know, it's not my daughter, um, it's a friend of my daughter, so I have some tangential love there. But that idea that somebody could feel seen and excited and included in something that was fun, you know, that was just, and that we don't think about, like, what kind of door does that open to the spirit, being able to, you know, participate in the fun of something, in the joy, in the celebration, in the whatever. And that for a lot of us, makeup is the joy and the fun. And the idea that these markets, you know, the business side of it says, oh look, a new market. Um, but that ends up serving a lot of people who haven't been, been served before, who haven't been included. And if, if we don't see it as enlightened self-interest, the fact that something that's being made or done at this point in time um, or normalized or, or whatever that at some time in the future might benefit us. Um, you just don't know. You don't know what in the future might be. You know, all of us are aging. And so really that whole seeing people who are aging 
participating in regular life. Like they didn't get put on a shelf and now they have to like, you know, go bare of makeup and, and roll in the ashes and you know, whatever. Like they can age, they can be beautiful, they can continue to participate and continue to be a part of the, the beauty consciousness. And it doesn't all have to be about like, um, we're wanting to make, you know, people who are aging no longer age, you know, that whole like the, the beauty myth that it's all gonna, you know, we're gonna stay smooth forever. But the idea that maybe if we see enough people of a certain age wearing lip color in our ads where it's not a thing, that'll make it feel better, feel more okay, feel less crazy that we're aging and have it be that normalization or seeing people of different colors just make it more normal that, hey, this is a, a place where people of a lot of different colors live and it's okay. And I feel like things that we can do that firm up um, our feelings of joy and confidence and excitement and fun for the world that we live in and who we are in that world, um, I think the more of those things, the better. So I'm really excited. I'm excited for new types of, of packaging. I'm excited for new types of advertising. Um, I'm excited for a point in time when I can be flipping through pictures of lipstick and that it, that it doesn't surprise me that there's a person with wrinkles wearing makeup um, because I'm getting that way. Um, I'm 50 and one of these days, you know, like I've noticed I've had more, more lines on this, on my upper lip part of it. And, you know, if, if you've seen my, my skincare collection, you know, like I've got a lot of eye creams cause I got a lot of stuff going on here and I'd like to kind of grow into my aging more gracefully. But I think on the deeper psychological level, the more people that I can see who have gone through these transformations, who have made it through, you know, adulthood and moving into an older, a new age, an older age, uh, where they do have wrinkles and sagging and things like that, and where maybe we want to be doing things about it, but it's not a death sentence if we have wrinkles. It doesn't mean that we're cast out of Valhalla and laughed at, you know, like we have a place in the society, we have a place in cosmetics and makeup, we have a place in skincare, and it's not a death sentence to age. Um, so anyway, all this to say, I think the ideas of seeing aging, seeing disability, seeing otherness, seeing skin color, seeing gender, like all of the things that, that beauty can bring us that either serve it directly, that people make money for making products, or that just you know, change our awareness or change our reaction to things, that there's a lot of beautiful things that, that beauty can do. And so I'm just, I'm super excited to see more things. I applaud companies like L'Oreal for uh, bringing new technology, for opening a sector for makeup for people who have not had that ability before. And for those companies who are working on, on both packaging and color and advertising and inclusion um, so that things like you know seeing an older pair of lips seeing a heavy set person wearing makeup seeing somebody from a different race or skin tone wearing makeup um, is no longer a, a shocking thing but a yeah we're doing this right so anyway hope everyone is doing well I'll try and link some things below that you might be interested in taking a look at. And until the next one, everyone stay well, love each other, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.